Hey, it's Ryan here, and I am building this product, Course Lift. This is a course hosting platform for course authors. If you are a course author and you want to uh, to have some guidance as you're selling your course and marketing your course um, in terms of how to find your audience and, and really get your course out there, Course Lift is aimed to help you do that. And right now, I'm building out the um, the spot where you would upload videos or other files, other assets. And I want to show just some of the wiring that I've got here for uploading the files. It's not in a complete state but I figured I'd show what I've done here to get this spot together um, basically what I do is I can upload a video I've got some placeholder stuff here right now but I've got this real progress bar that's working and the file once it gets uploaded goes over to s3 so I've got this uh, this uh, s3 bucket in my AWS account. And once the file gets uploaded to S3, there's a background job that get, gets kicked off to send the video over to Muse.ai. And Muse is a platform that takes uh, video content and does some AI stuff on it. Uh, and allows you to do things like search through your videos by text and it will transcribe your videos. It'll give you the text of your, the, the, the spoken wor uh, words of your video in, in text form. Um, it, very, very cool platform. I found it recently and it's a, it's a really neat tool that I think will be really valuable for course authors and their students. Uh, the idea is that students will eventually consume the videos that end up here from each course author. So I wanted to show some of the wiring in case it's useful. Uh, I've got this React application and and this is a Redwood JS application. Uh, I'm using TypeScript in it. I have got a bunch of stuff going on, but I wanted to just in particular show what I'm doing here in this drop zone area. So I'm using React drop zone. I have got the use drop zone hook from it. Um, and what happens here is I've got all these functions that come from the use drop zone hook. They get applied to various elements down here. Like this is my uh, drag area here. You apply the get root props function to it. And then you can set up your input to, to take your, your drag and drop area. Uh, you can also, as you saw, you can click on it and, and upload files that way. And what happens is when a file gets dropped is you can hook into this on drop function. And this accepts an array of files, which you can then operate on. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just operating on the first file that gets dropped. There will be support for multiple files at a time, but I'm just at this point using, uh, you know, doing support for, for a single file. What I've got going on here is I take a file and I append it to some form data. So I've got the form data object here. I am appending a file, that, that first file, in the array, and then I'm using Axios to post it over to this endpoint that I've got on an express server, which I'll show in a second, uh, passing in that form data as data. And then, the, the, so the reason I'm using Axios here instead of something like fetch is because there's this on upload progress uh, callback. This is super useful for reporting the amount that has been uploaded so that you can do things with a progress bar. Uh, this is the easiest way that I found to uh, to use a progress bar kind of thing where you need to get the amount that's been uploaded. And uh, this was you know, pretty simple to wire up instead of trying to wrangle my own code together to make it happen. So uh, when I get some progress, what I'm doing is I'm setting some state here. I've got a file name that goes on state for set file upload. I've got the amount completed and uh, uh, the presence of something in state here for file upload is what I'm using to actually show this area down here, which is that placeholder, that uh, place kitten placeholder image with the progress bar. That's what I'm doing using here, the, the file upload um, object to be able to show this area. So that's the front end of things. Thing, uh, the, the file gets uploaded via Axios to, uh, to an endpoint on my express server, and I'll show that here. And one note here is Redwood helps you to set up um, serverless functions for your API, so you can tap into that very easily. But it's not so great for file uploads because there's like caps on how much you can upload. It's not so great with, for dealing with streams and that kind of thing when you're you're working with serverless. So the the best way that I found from from reading is to use like a dedicated server um, to to handle file uploads, and that's what I'm doing here. So I've got this upload endpoint. Uh, it's a it accepts post requests, and I'm using this library called Busboy. Um, if you've been around Node for a while, you you might have used this or, or maybe you're at least familiar with it. I had never used it until now. I'd never heard of it, but it helps with streaming file uploads. 
Um, so what happens is with Busboy is instead of taking at your endpoint the whole file, let's say it's like a gigabyte or two gigabytes or something, that's going to chew up the memory of your server very quickly. Instead, you can use Busboy to take parts of the file at a time. You can stream your uploads. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. So the this file here that comes through, um, if you did like file.length, you would see um, many instances of how many bytes are coming through at a time. So it happens, it happens in chunks. And that's really useful for freeing up the memory on your server. When, once I get the file, I upload it to S3. So taking in the file uh, as parameters here, I can then send it over to S3. Once that's done, I can add a job to my queue to, that I'm, I'm using bull for, for this queue. Um, for, so bull is like a message queue for, for node. It's, it's very good. You can, you can add jobs to it and then process them in the background. So my logic here is basically once the file gets uploaded to S3, as far as the user is concerned, that uh, upload process is complete for them. So they can get a message back, uh, and I'm doing that here, response.json, uh, message done. This says to the user, okay, the upload is complete, um, but there's still a processing step that needs to take place. And so what I'll have eventually is um, some kind of record in my database that says a file exists, uh, an upload uh, has been started, and it's in a state of either like uploading or processing or whatnot. And that information will be sent back to the user to see where their file is at. And I'm using Supabase as my database host, and they've got a lot of great stuff for real time. So I'll probably tap into the real time um, functionality that they've got to, to just up, update the client uh, in real time. Uh, but in any case, as far as the user is concerned, once it's at S3, their upload is safe there in S3, it's done from, the upload is done from their perspective. Um, they get a message back saying it's done, but there is still the, the upload to to Muse, which will happen in the background, which will be kind of the processing step for the user. Um, so Muse upload queue is down here. You can process uh, whatever comes through in the queue as a job. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking the job that comes through. I'm using the same kind of method that I did on the client where I've got a new form data. I'm appending the data to it. And then I am sending that over to Muse uh, via Axios here. And that will take some time to do. Once it's done, you'll get uh, uploading complete. And the eventually, the database state will be updated to say that uh, everything is, is done being processed. There's a bit of processing time once the file gets to Muse as well. Uh, and I can, I can ping for that and, and see if that's done before sending messages back to, to the client saying everything is completely done. The idea is that once the file has totally been com completely uploaded and processed, they'll then be able to interact with it and use it, like add it to courses and, and lead magnets and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that's the, the general idea. I'll show you one example of a file that's a bit bigger. So this video I did a while back as 88.7 megabytes. The first one we did was 11.6. This one, 88.7. So if I open this, once I do, it will start uploading. And so this progress bar should move along. There we go, 4052. It's it's moving along. Things are uploading. And again, this happens because of that really easy um, callback that we get from Axios. So Axios was a very nice choice in this case to show the actual uploading um, progress that, that the file has taken on. Once we have uploaded it, we should get it here. Cascading deletes. Um, is the upload that went through to S3. It should now be on S3. Let's check over here. We get cascading deletes. It is there. And we should see eventually, because we're running with a queue, things are happening in the background. Again, from the client's perspective, the the job is the the upload job is done. They've at this point gotten a message back saying complete, so I can show like a check mark here eventually. But in the background on my node server, I've got the file processing, and in fact that's the state that we're at here. Processing file, it's showing the info, and then done uploading uh, comes through once it's done. So in theory, we are now over at Muse should be there and there we go so we get our file coming through here and uh you know so here it is we get you know the, the transcription done for us this uh you know comes through very very quickly 
awesome stuff from Muse. I'm really excited to use this. So my logic here is basically like S3 is kind of long-term storage for the file. Um, I, I kind of need a place to store the file before I send it over to Muse anyway. Like it could be, you know, fi file storage on my server, um, but because servers are ephemeral, I don't know if that works the best, um, you know, but, but this also serves as long-term storage for the file if it's over here in S3. And so if anything ever happens to the files on Muse, I can go back over to my S3 and, you know, send them somewhere else or, or whatever whatever the case might be. File ends up, then ends up on Muse where all this processing is done. And then I can have students consume these files uh, through like the web interface that they will see that the author creates for them. So that's the general overall kind of uh, picture of where things are at with the upload process. There's there's more logic that needs to go in there. Is, there are kind of error conditions that I've, I've definitely got to handle. There's more to do here, but that's I think the the base of it is in now. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, you know, if you if you like this kind of thing where I give an overview of the architecture, let me know in the comments if you want to see more stuff like this. And um, you know, I, I'll I'll try to do a few more of these things. You can check out CourseLift if you're interested in the product itself. It's at CourseLift.com, uh, or check it out on Twitter. It's at CourseLift there. I'll put some links to to this in the description. Also, I will put, uh, I'll try to do like a, a small demo of this architecture, put it together on, uh, on GitHub and I'll put a link to that as well. All right. Thanks for watching.